Welcome wrestling fans, welcome to Curtain Jerkin, as always I am your host Jacob Grani reporting for the main event Mark's YouTube channel, you can also check me out on Spotify, however you're listening to my voice, I appreciate it, we have a jammed packed edition of Curtain Jerkin today, or tonight, I'm recording at 7 o'clock on a Tuesday, I'm about to talk a bunch of wrestling, then get off, watch NXT, watch Dynamite, and jump back in here tomorrow night to talk about wrestling, I love wrestling, I love Chicago, I was in Chicago, I stopped by Mindy's Bakery, the famous bakery from the Brawl Out, CM Punk's rant prior to Brawl Out, after All Out 2021, or 2022, whenever it was, I think I think it was 2022 uh and the bakery was good it was very delicious um if i was mad at my co-workers and you gave me a i did not have the muffins they were actually sold out of muffins but if you gave me some banana bread and a bagel just like i got from these guys i would you know make note of how good and delicious the banana bread and the bagel were the coffee was great if you're ever in chicago it's worth a blue line trip out there and uh, that area was cool too i went to a record store a thrift store so that whole area where mindy's bakery is is worth going out to and now that it's kind of a pro wrestling tourist destination if you ask me i went to hulk hogan's beach shop in tampa i went to mindy's bakery in chicago i'll go to uh abdullah the butcher's house of ribs or uh big papa pump shoney's uh if i was ever in atlanta so uh you know that's just something that i like to do is uh explore obscure wrestling related um places while i'm traveling and it was great chicago is great too uh went to saw the panthers lose they lost to the bears on thursday night football i saw the bulls play i mean just being in that arena uh you know a few weeks ago dynam our collision was in chicago where uh, the bulls play i forget the name of the state the place even though i was just there and all the AEW wrestlers were like marking out that they were there where michael jordan played i was like what's the big fucking deal but then when I got there, I realized the big fucking deal. It is crazy. It feels like he's like still somehow in the walls. Kevin Durant was there, and there was a lot of Kevin Durant fans, a lot of Bulls fans mad that there were Kevin Durant fans. There was heat. Kevin Durant had heat in that building. Um, but let's get away from my vacation and get into some sad news. Bunny from AEW, Allie, Lauren Allie, is, was let go from from AEW, unfortunately, one of my favorite female wrestlers. Um, so I'm, you know, always enjoyed seeing Allie, but I'm gonna enjoy seeing more of Allie because she has an OnlyFans. Gonna have to run over there, jump on there. There will be a review of her OnlyFans next podcast. But she's not the only one leaving her home promotion. We have Nakajima and Noah leaving or had has left Noah um you know he's one of those guys who the entire time I've been kind of really keeping up with Noah which I got to admit I'm kind of a bandwagon Noah jumper I I always watch Noah way back in the day when you know Masawa you know watching YouTube videos and full matches of Masawa and uh I mean honestly when the Briscoes would go over there that green ring is kind of stuff of legend and then I started watching when they put the belt on Muda. And when they put the belt on Muda, and you know, you had Go Shizaki, and all the fans wanted either Go Shizaki or Nakajima to have the title. But for whatever reason, they never put the title on him. They kept putting it on the like older guys, guys that they thought, you know, a casual fan like me would like. During that time, Nakajima was having great freaking matches with anybody you would think of knocking people out working so you want to talk about working snug i mean this guy's probably the stiffest motherfucker in wrestling today or that i know of at least um so he had a hardcore fans behind him but they never would put the title on him or if they did it was very short notice he's a small stature guy so maybe that held him back a little bit even though he was super over but he's left wrestles not it has signed a contract but wrestles in all japan this is someone i would think would probably going to show up at wrestle kingdom this year uh if you know and then you i mean then off to the races you could have him and ishii uh 
I mean, that's really what I want to see him and Ishii. I was about to list a bunch of names, but then it's just like a cloud of the desire of Nakajima versus Ishii that I that I have just kind of came over me. I couldn't. I don't want. I just want to see him and Ishii wrestle. Um, but I. That's my prediction is he's going to appear at Wrestle Kingdom after this short sin in all Japan. We'll talk more about Wrestle Kingdom later on. We're going to talk about WWE right now. Crown Jewel uh, happened since we last spoke, and of course it happened a while ago. So I'm just going to go over maybe some main points here. Logan Paul with the U.S. title. Good. I'm glad. Uh, he cut his, the little promo he did for social media with his brother. He does a lot of funny things with social media, kind of picking up where Paige left off, but in like a more ironic, less like tape leaky kind of way, you know, showering with the title, sleeping with the title, holding the title while his girlfriend holds him. That was kind of funny. And then even alluding to saying that Triple H said that he could not fuck with the title, um, which I thought was kind of funny as well. Uh, John Cena taking the L from Solo. Uh, Huge win for Solo. And then Cena walks away uh, kind of like this is the end. Could this be the end? I hope not. Even though the writer strike is over, the acting strike is over, I still want to see Cena have one more marquee match. Uh, I mean, he kind of already put over Reigns. He put over Rollins years ago. He put over Austin Theory. You know, uh, he was out there with Grayson Waller for a little bit, and then he even put over Solo Sokoa here. So I'm not really sure what else is left for him. You know, this victory lap of a career has been going on for a while. But I'm just not ready to let Cena go. I don't know. I'm marking out a little bit here. Cena was the guy who they put the rocket on after the Attitude Era. And uh, him retiring at the same year that Sting retires would kind of just... I don't know. I'm not ready. Even though I'm 34 years old, I'm not ready for my childhood to go away that abruptly yet. I think Cena still can, can have a few matches. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm talking with my heart and not my head. But going into SmackDown, Escobar and Ray, they didn't see eye to eye. Carlito driving a wedge between the two of them a little bit here. Ray ends up bitch slapping Escobar and then trying to apologize. Escobar's not having it and attacks Ray using steps. And Ray does need surgery on his knee. I think this is a shoot here. So I think they did the angle because of that. But uh, I, I don't think that this kind of angle needs the U.S. title. So I'm glad they put it on Logan Paul because he's doing great things with it. And now they have this cool LWO storyline kind of coming off of Logan Paul's victory and Rey Mysterio's loss. Kyrie Sane appeared at Crown Jewel. She also appeared on SmackDown. New look, very hip, Tokyo designer, thrift shop vibes going on here. Uh, joins Damage Control. Damage Control goes up against Charlotte, Belair, and Asuka. And then Asuka... Doesn't tag Bianca, missed her former WrestleMania opponent, and joins Damage Control as well as, uh, you know, joins Damage Control as well, I should say. Five members of Damage Control, making this a very strong faction. Shotzi runs out to no avail. Uh, I missed the insane elbow. We got to see the insane elbow. Very cool that it's back. Uh, and then, so you have the good guys. You got Bianca, you got Charlotte, you got Shotzi, a ragtag group of good guys going up against a strong heel faction. I mean, I think this is this is good shit here happening on SmackDown in the women's division here. I would say I'm more intrigued by this women's division now with the uh, positions and things they did than any other women's division on U.S. television. L.A. Knight still over after taking the L from Crown Jewel. Interrupted by Grayson Waller. L.A. Knight calls uh, Twitter X, which, uh, I mean, I always make note of someone who's calling it X, so he calls it X, not Twitter. Ends up dropping Grayson Waller. Later on, Grayson and Theory come out, dump water on Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens chases after them, doesn't care that he's going to get suspended, attacks him anyways. And now I, I, maybe we're going to have L.A. Knight and K.O., you know, taking on Grayson Waller in theory somehow. I don't know. We can, we'll can. we have to see what happens out of that. Uh, but I think that this was a bloodlineless SmackDown. And I enjoyed it. It took me a while to pick up on this. I enjoyed Dragon Lee versus Cedric Alexander. Still wild to see these guys on SmackDown. Dragon Lee hits a version of Naito's move. The uh, uh, in, uh, Indicino. I, I don't really know how... Ke I wish I was Kevin Kelly right now. I would say it perfectly. But hits a move that I've seen... Uh, Naito do to get the one, two, three. Pushing Dragon Lee is great. 
he can have a good match with anyone, I think. And, uh, you know, he would be a great opponent for, like, Logan Paul, for example. Going over to Raw, we had uh, the two War Games teams brawling. you love to see that shit. Pierce bans everyone that is in the War Games match from the arena in the main event that took place Later on, going over to that main event, we have Cody Rhodes and Jey Uso hitting the code D onto Finn Balor. 1-2, Damian Priest breaks it up. But then Drew McIntyre hits the Claymore kick to Jey and helps Judgment Day get the victory. God damn. Drew is, as a heel is great because we know what drove him to do this. He was, you know... The face champion during the pandemic, a great champion, lost the title as we went to the crowds. Then the hottest crowd of his career in in Wales. Then the bloodline screws him over from that title. So it makes sense that he's attacking one of the bloodline members to help another faction win. Now, you know, you can't beat the faction. You joined a strong faction. And now he's helping Judgment Day. Um, I, I, This is great. Rhea was you know happy about this at the end of Raw, but before this happened, before Drew McIntyre helped them win, uh, she was pissed and gets interrupted by Zoe Starks. Zoe Starks is concerned about being overlooked, but I mean, come on, man. No one thinks you're going to win this title, Zoe. It's going to stay on Rhea probably till Mania. Kaiser and Ciampa had a good match until Vinci sneak attacks Gargano. Kaiser rolls up Ciampa based on the distraction. That was cool. Zia Lee and Indy Hartwell spin kick knockout. Indy Hartwell knocked the fuck out. Zia Lee picking up the victory. I think they're pushing her. Uh, going up against Becky here. I mean, this is a, you know, kind of seems like it's coming out of nowhere, but I think she can hold her own here. And, uh, you know, we'll see. We'll see what Becky does. It seems like they don't know what to do with Becky Lynch. Uh, You know, they brought her over to NXT. She's like more over. They don't want to pair her with Rhea yet. But you do have these two strong female faces on Raw. And they're the only two that anyone cares about. But that's the only match you can probably do going into WrestleMania Royal Rumble season. So you don't want to have them touch. So you're stuck with like Rhea Ripley and Zoe Starks. We all know who's going to win that match. We can see it from a mile away. Zia Lee versus Becky Lynch. We can see it from a mile away. So I would say that uh, these problems with the Raw Women's Division, SmackDown isn't having. You're having the eight superstars that everyone cares about going at it, fighting, screwing each other over, high five each other, hugging each other, making it work. Miz beats Ibar, putting his feet on the rope like a sneaky little son of a bitch he is. Bronson Reed then attacks Ibar after the match. Talk about big meat slapping meat. Um, we'll get into to another big man battle a little later, but I think Bronson Reed and Ibar, I bet they can tear the house down. Going over to AEW. I love Faction and Gorbanables. Their video packages are strong. It kind of makes me forget I'm watching wrestling. Um, you know, I, I always want to compare them to like the LWO. And I feel like uh, at least their video packages kind of make them stand out and come across way better than the LWO in uh, WWE. Uh, this, is, this kind of went into a shoot promo too, like when they're having like a meeting with each other, uh, saying that the company says he's dangerous. Rush says that, and that's true. You know, he said he learned English, he learned the style, and then, you know, they kind of aren't using him, which I, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if this is a real frustration coming from the guy. I know I'm late talking about this, but this video package was money. Jumping over to Dynamite, enjoyed uh garcia versus mjf match the one arm pile driver into the salt of the earth having to tap based on the damage done to that arm earlier in the match this is the wrestling i like to fucking see sting and darby versus the outrunners sting tapped them out and then seeing the appreciation from the portland crowd was really cool <clears throat> hangman page attacking swerve <coughs> After Swerve's match with Pinto was really cool as well. Fuck this creep. I don't like the guy sneaking into Hangman Page's child's crib. I want to see him attacked more. I also want to see Keith Lee versus Samoa Joe a little more. Big meat slapping meat yet again like Bronson Reed and Ibar. As they say, 
Why don't they use Keith Lee more? I don't know. Joe chokes him out here, though, then vacates the title, and then they try to make it seem like he's the longest reigning TV champion of all time, which he is. Don't get me wrong. They don't make it seem like that, but he was the longest reigning TV champion because you didn't know what to fucking do with him. He kept coming out. He kept being awesome. Promos were good. Matches were good. He was like the most over guy in collision over the summer when I went, and you guys just didn't know really what to do with him. And that's why probably this TV title stayed on him for as long as it did. It was good to see uh, the Bollywood boys. I thought they would be a shoe in for AEW. They've only been in AEW a few times, and here they are, here they are losing to the Guns. Uh, the Guns, however, they're both good at promos. They cut some right here after this match. Julia Hart versus Red Velvet. Uh, where the fuck has Red Velvet been? Moonsault 1, 2, 3. Julie Hart wins and still locks in the Heartless after she's done here like a real asshole. Sky Blue comes out and they just stare down. I don't know what's going to happen. It's like two hot goth chicks like just looking at each other. I don't know. I was looking and they were looking at each other. And Willow and Statlander came out to break it, things up, maintain order a little bit. Red Velvet, though, has been gone for a while. So is Mark Briscoe. And they both wrestled here. Mark Briscoe in the main event against Jay White. Jay wins. MJF Music Hits comes out from behind. Takes out Bullet Club Gold. He wants uh, his title back. Cuts a killer promo. Babyface promo. Goddamn killer on the mic. I would call him Magic Mike. But I think that would be weird. MJF. I mean he is in like five different storylines in this company right now. But I think he is warranted that. Because he is so good in ring. And on the mic, uh, lights go out, and uh, the masked men are attacking the acclaimed here. The devil mask shows up on the screen, so kind of uh, hinting that MJF is, uh, you know, in the ring. So he's not back there orchestrating this attack, or maybe he is. Uh, and they're attacking his friends, the guys who bailed him out. So I don't think it's MJF quite yet, or I don't think it is him. But then Joe shows up and says, looks like you're running out of friends, and then laughs. I don't trust that laugh. I think that, you know, Joe relinked through his title and is giving MJF no other choice but to have him be his tag partner, which is kind of sketchy. So something tells me that Joe might be behind this, but that skinny guy that they had in that devil mask, there's no way that that devil is Joe because, I mean, it was like a scrawny dude in that mask, and Joe is not scrawny by any means. Rampage, we had Starks versus Vance, Big Bill on commentary. Uh, Big Bill's a funny guy. He gets involved, Spear 1, 2, 3. So we had these great vignettes of Lucy and Grimm. Inger Bernables only leading to Preston Vance just taking an L. Uh, Louis and Bernables come out to stop the assault to Preston Vance. Uh, Velvet is back for the second show in a row wrestling Ruby Riot. Uh, someone brings Ruby flowers mid match. Uh, it wasn't me, I promise. Ref is too busy putting out the flowers to see that Red Velvet's got the pin. And then there was some sloppy mistimed shit here. Ruby has a good look. But I got to say that a lot of matches with her in it are like there's some mistimed things happening. I don't think, I mean, I don't know. There always seems to be some, some mistimed stuff. That's I'm just going to leave it at that. Uh, Red Velvet gets the win, though. The Kingdom come out. And then you just hear Dasha and Roderick Strong cutting a promo in the neck brace going down the ring uh, saying that it's no neck November. Uh, pretty, pretty funny stuff. This, you know, the, some of these vignettes at Adam, Adam Cole's house kind of, uh, jumped the shark a little bit, but back in the confines of the wrestling arena, it's getting good again. It's getting funny again. Uh, they went up against Los, or uh, the kingdom went up against Los Savikitos, five-year vets based at, out of FSW in Las Vegas. Strong just gets right up there, uh, out of his chair to hit a brain buster, uh, like a lying asshole he is and jumps back into his chair uh that was funny ftr and Vic ftr versus vikingo and commander great match here uh power and glory spot gets cut off uh during the cross body portion because commander jumps on there and hits a hurricane rana then they hit stereo 450s to ftr one two ftr kicks out slingshot power bomb but before dash could get the pin Commander rolls him up, one, two, no. Nigel calls it a shatter machine. Tony Schiavone corrects him. 
Either way, you get the big rig, one, two, three. Nigel called it the WWE name. That's a big no-no in AEW. House of Black wants uh, FTR. And he the, uh, after the six-man tag match that I saw in August, where it was Punk and FTR versus House of Black, I mean, this match is going to be good, too. I saw that in Collision, of course. And I saw Collision, of course, this week, too. Garcia versus Andrade. CJ Perry out there with Andrade. He did the classic moonsault guy rolls uh, out of the way for Andrade to land on his feet to then only hit the standing moonsault. I love that shit. Every time I see it, I'm not over it yet. Garcia taps to the figure eight. Miro watching, sarcastically smiling with uh, Andrade with his wife. Dalton Castle versus Nick Wayne. A lot of old school wrestling fans really criticize Nick Wayne because of his size. But when I saw him in GCW a few years ago, he was killing it. And he was definitely a standout. I enjoy the fact that he made it to AEW. So I was interested in this match against Dalton Castle, a former uh, collegiate wrestler and former RH champion. The boys keep keeping Luchasaurus at bay, but getting chokeslammed for their effort. And that's what set up Wayne to hit the Wayne's World 1-2-3. Fine match. And you had Los Ingobernables versus the Work Horseman. Drake on the top. No one home. Snug dropkick by Rush right in the face. One, two, three. I mean, I know that I guess they say he's dangerous, but I like the way Roosh wrestles. It, it brings me into it. It makes me believe, even for a short few seconds, like I get caught up in the match because he's working snug. It's it, it comes across as real, and it might be real. I don't know. House of Black cuts a promo, uh, challenges for the tag titles at full gear. Strong and Darius Martin, end of heartache, one, two, three, of course. Needing the neck brace right after the match. The Kingdom licked the wounds, uh, punched them in the wiener, and then hits them with a pile driver. Action Andretti comes out, but the damage was already done. Julia Hart versus Willow. Uh, Garcia, Julia, Sting, all wrestling multiple times on AEW television this week. Hart got dropped on her ass. I guess this was supposed to be where she landed on her feet, but it didn't really work out. Still ends up hitting the moonsault, gets the victory. No BS Paul White out at ringside during Powerhouse Hobbs match. Uh, they're going up against each other. Uh, Powerhouse Hobbs, though, went up against Titus Alexander, a 16-year vet that we, uh, we've we seen a few times in AEW. Hobbs makes short work of him, though, leading into this eight-man tag street fight or that we're getting at Dynamite. Not at full gear. We're getting this match at Dynamite. Garcia and Julia. Uh, you know, like I said, they aren't the only ones. We had the Stinger teaming with Adam Copeland and Darby versus the Righteous and Lance Archer. I wouldn't mind seeing Lance Archer with uh, the Righteous permanently. He looked good and he looked like he fit in the members of his team. They looked great together. Copeland, Darby, and Singh do get the win though. Jumping over to New Japan though. So, you know, I talked about Nakajima. I do think he's going to appear for New Japan after leaving what many people consider his home promotion, Noah. And I think he's going to debut at Wrestle Kingdom. Wrestle Kingdom 18, which is crazy. I started religiously watching New Japan at Wrestle Kingdom 9. So, this is my ninth Wrestle Kingdom that I've uh, woken up early for and watched. So, let's break down uh, the matches so far because I got a, quite a few of them already announced. We had the Never Openweight Championship match. Tama Tonga versus Shingo. This match just happened in Las Vegas. It was a great match. Uh, Shingo beat Tama Tonga to, to win the Never Openweight Championship. And here they are wrestling again. Um, I'm going to have to say... Shingo wins again. I'm not, I don't know why I'm going with that. I'm just going with that. And then you have the New Japan World television championship match Zack Sabre Jr. the only champion this title has ever had he was the first championship uh, this match is really cool it's a 15 minute time limit uh, Zack Sabre Jr. has killed this stipulation uh, I love all the ways he has you know done well with this title and had entertaining matches going up against the legend himself Hiroshi Tanahashi and in the Tokyo Dome I know Zack Sabre Jr. Uh, has held the title for a long time, but I think it's time for him to drop it to Tanahashi in the dome. Tanahashi's gonna—he's winning—he's winning in the dome. That's how it's gonna work. 
And then you have the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champion, uh, Hiromu Takahashi versus El Desperado. I remember El Desperado uh, won the best of the Super Juniors a few years ago to go up against Hiromu Takahashi, and they had an amazing match to the point where I thought El Desperado was going to ha have the rocket strapped to him and start winning more matches, maybe move up to heavyweight. So I, I don't know... Um, I don't know who will win this match necessarily. I'm going to go with Hiromu, but I do think this match has potential to steal the fucking show. IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Championship match. You have uh, Drilla Maloney and Clark Connors versus the Francisca Akira and TJP. <clears throat> so a little Bullet Club versus United Empire here. Um... Bullet Club are champions. This is a hot potato. Any time that this title or the six-man titles are on the line, it's a safe bet to go with just the other team because this is like a hot potato, uh, hot potato championship here. So I'm gonna go with United Empire just for that reason. And then we have the IWGP US Heavyweight Championship match: Triple Threat: Will Ospreay, John Moxley, and David Finley. Uh, Okay, I'm going to say Will Ospreay, amazing, amazing wrestler. John Moxley, David Finley, they're uh, amazing. They're good personalities. I do feel like this match uh, is kind of holding Will Ospreay back a little bit here. I mean, we, I can't be the only one that wanted Ospreay Omega 3 in the Tokyo Dome for the second time. But we're not getting it. We're getting this match. And um, I do think that Ospreay has alluded to you know his title being... His, uh, his not title, but his contract being up, and I I think that I think Moxley's gonna win here because I think David Finley. I think you kind of want to push him a little more. You don't want to put that U.S. title on him. You want to put something more on him. So I think it might go back on John Moxley here. Then we have the special singles match: Okada versus Brian freaking Danielson, a rematch from uh, Forbidden Door. This is gonna be great here. I mean, these are one of my top five favorite wrestlers right here. Okada versus Brian Danielson. It's the Dome. Okada's winning here. And then we have the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship match. Sonata, uh, a champion who I think this might be a little project uh, trying to get him over, you know, leaving Ingo Bernables, kind of being the leader of his own faction here, holding the title, looking more clean cut than he did on... In, when he was in Ingobernables, going up against his former leader, the leader of Ingo, Los Ingobernables de Japón. Uh, so that's kind of interesting here. Uh, so this faction split. So you do have Los Ingobernables, the one that Roosh leads, that kind of started. But this all started in CMLL, where Naito did his excursion, where Naito wrestles or wrestled fairly often. So he became a member of Los Ingo Bernables. Then he went to Japan and he became the leader of Los Ingo Bernables de Japón, as they say it. And then I guess Rouge has the original Los Ingo Bernables that kind of f filtered over to America in AEW. So that's a little lesson there, I guess, or just maybe catching you guys up to speed. Uh, I think Naito is going to win it here. I think that the Sonata experiment did not go as well as they had planned. So I think that, um, you know, they're going to just kind of maybe cut the cord with it and go back to uh, something that they already know is a guaranteed success, which is one of the most over people in all of wrestling, Naito winning the world title in the Tokyo Dome. Of course, he lost in the world title match a few years ago against Okada, and I think it was like 2018 or 2019, or yeah, sorry, 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 I think it was 2018, uh, lost to Okada in the Dome, a heartbreaker. A lot of people thought that that was Naito's time then, but it's definitely his time now. Uh, long awaited, overdue, some would say, Naito is winning the title in the Dome. Staying in Japan, I'm going to talk about a company I rarely talk about on here, DDT Pro. Um, had a show over the weekend. I have not seen a full show of DDT. I've seen DDT matches and clips over the years, uh, but never a full show here. Uh, 
DDT is known for launching the careers of wrestlers like Kenny Omega, Kota Ibushi, Sami Zayn, Takeshita, and also their comedy matches, which we will get into kind of here in a little bit. They get kind of out of hand, and they end up insulting some old school wrestling fans and some old school wrestling enthusiasts. I am just going to say here, uh, before I get into it, uh, the people that listen to this show... um, who are fans of like old school wrestling, old school territory wrestling, trigger warning off the top trigger warning. Uh, there is some wrestling here that we will talk about that will upset you. So um, if you are easily upset by things that, um, you know, that maybe Jim Cornette would be upset about just, I, I won't, I won't care to stop the show right here. Let me know in the comments below what you thought about what I talked about earlier. Let me know on X. LA Knight switched to X. I'm switching to X. Let me know on X what you think about uh, the show that and everything I talked about previous to this. But here we go into the review of DDT. Um, I saw... Uh, Ho- I'm going to butcher these names too. Uh, T- Takeshi Masada, 22-year-old upstart versus... Kuroshu Tokyo Japan formerly the guy on NXT with the blazer is now the guy in DDT with the blazer Jiro um, still with the blazer but now uh, known as uh, Kuroshu Tokyo Japan that is his name he says Tokyo Japan in the name this guy is a master of getting a lot out of a little bit here uh, getting to the ring itself was a spectacle he goes through the crowd kind of like spider Nate Webb not like John Moxley's very fun festive thing that he's doing in the crowd really just not wanting to get into the ring at all cracking the crowd up exciting them at the same time then when the match starts he uh locks in a headlock just like you've seen a million times but he uses that blazer wraps it around his opponent's face uh suffocating them during the headlock so you know in a normal rest hold spot a very simple hold he is getting the crowd to laugh and and enjoy what's happening with him it's a it's very fun gimmick i think and he even picks up the victory um, I'm only going to be talking about matches here that I think my audience would be interested in. Uh, Hiroshima, uh, Yaki Inaya, and Jun Akiyama, legend from all Japan, Noah, is now in DDT and is teaming up on the DDT side of things against an all Japan team, the Voodoo Murderers. Uh, the Saito brothers, who I can see maybe coming to America and getting some success because of their, because of their size. And uh, Taji, Tajizo. So that's an all Japan pro wrestling team coming to DDT and wrestling. Uh, Akima gets the victory uh, for his team. Um, and then we move on to the next six man tag match that we're going to watch. Uh, Kaz, Kazuida Haguchi, Nero Marifuji, and Mai Yamashita, the lady of this team. Uh, very hard hitting. I very I like I love watching her wrestle. Hideki Akana, Hakani Saki Akia. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, but Sakia, I'm not very sure who she is, but she was retiring. This was her last match, and uh, you can just tell by the pageantry and. Um, the presentation of this show in this match that it was a big deal. I'd never heard of her, but I know it's a big deal that she was retiring. So as a company, they did a great job putting this fact over for me. Yokira and Yokira Sakaguchi was in this match as well. I never have, just like I said, yeah, I've never seen Saki Ike wrestle, but when she lost the match, everyone else in the match started crying. So, and then they showed this video package my Sacrifice by Creed in the Attitude Era, Eat Your Heart Out. This almost brought me to tears, and I don't even know this woman. Uh, wrestling just pulls at the heartstrings sometimes, and this was one of those times. It was crazy to see. And then the weirdest wrestling match I have ever seen in my life took place in front of my eyes. I'm going to say it again here. Trigger warning to the old school territory fans. Hiromu Takahashi, that's right, the gentleman who is the champion of the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Division in New Japan versus Kazuki Hirata, a DDT Iron Man Heavyweight Heavy Metal title. Uh, this title is kind of like the 24-7 title of Japan, but 
Like, that isn't even half of the ridiculousness of the title itself. Um, you'll understand. So it was a spin the wheel match here. But it's... Okay, so yeah, we'll get into it. Uh, so they spun the wheel and the gimmick they land on first was uh, a match where you had to dance for the move to to count uh and hiromu got hit with like a dancing kick here or something he called bullshit just started attacking the guy uh that popped me but then the ref stopped it uh you had to dance for the move to be legal in this gimmick matches uh this gimmick type but then the wheel spun again and it landed on handicapped match you know a nice little old school gimmick no because it was a handicap match between Hiromu versus his opponent and a blow-up doll and I don't know if it's the exact same blow-up doll don't get me wrong here but it's the blow-up doll with the gimmick that Kodobushi famously wrestled that uh, people talk about you know on podcasts to this day it happened like 12 years ago uh the wheel spins again after a while so it lands on a blindfold brazier match. So both wrestlers put on bras and then put on blindfolds. And it was like a bra and panties match, but the two opponents were blindfolded. You had to remove the bra of your opponent to win this section of the match. Um, I'm not sure if there was points accumulated here or there was points being taken away. I'm not sure like why you would want to win this portion rather than just trying to pin the person. But here they are in the ring. Uh, with braziers on these these wrestlers these you know i mean the Hiromu tagashi wrestles in the tokyo dome with bra with the with a blindfold on and uh that's what fucking happened here i think the other guy got his bra off so they spun the wheel again and it landed on on a 55 minute dancing death match here so they danced or whatever i don't really understand what's happening it wasn't 55 minutes Hiromu pinned Hirata, and then they fell down in exhaustion. I was exhausted, so I get it. But the IWGP Junior title, the New Japan Championship, was laying over Hiromu when they laid down. The ref counted one, two, three. So the title became the champion of the other title. That's right, the IWGP Junior title for a brief moment in time, became the DDT Iron Man Heavy Metal Champion. Harada, being a human being, and the other thing being an inanimate object, which is the champion, pinned the IWGP Junior Championship to become the DDT Iron Man Heavy Metal Champion, and then ran off. Uh, I mean, this was, you know, it had me intrigued. I, it was very peculiar. Uh... It was more weird than cool. It was more weird than funny to me. And I think they were going with cool and funny and hip. And I don't... I, I mean, I couldn't pick up... I, it was It was weird. It was weird shit. I, it was supposed to be weird, too. So, I mean, you can't really say that it was weird. And they were trying to be like a tough, you know, uh, traditional American company here. I mean, this was weird. It was designed to be weird. And they nailed it. So, I had to take a break, honestly. Uh, after a while but then i came back and matt cardona the indie god fresh entrance gear with stefan uh D- steph delander going up against mayo eight-year veteran who uh, started in ddt but has wrestled everywhere including AEW in a six-man tag match at one point uh, i was ready for a normal match but after a ref bump comes the blow-up doll again and the blow-up doll was acted as the ref for a brief portion of this match uh i mean I don't know how I say it, but they did it well. They, like, um, it, it, you know, the no one took moves from the blow up doll, um, and the they kicked out of all the blow up doll pin counts, and then Steph just kind of threw the blow up doll in the audience, and the real ref came back. Matt Cardona got hit with the Rough Rider. Now the radio silence off the top rope through three plastic boxes mayo's i guess weapon of choice here is like plastic boxes kind of like sandman with the kendo stick or la parka with the chair mayo has plastic boxes and he hit uh matt cardona through three plastic boxes um so not necessarily a normal match here but the reason i tuned in took place next chris jericho versus kanosuke takeshita 
Big fight feel here. This is awesome chance in Japan. Never heard that before. Blue Thunder Bomb, Frog Splash, No One Home. For Takeshita, Lion Salt 1 2. Takeshita kicks out. Takeshita blocking the Judas effect. Senton, Jericho gets his knees up. Lion Salt, Takeshita gets his knees up. So sick. Wheelbarrow Press 1 2. No. Code Breaker 1 count. Kick out. Bitch Slap Battle. Lion Tamer. Takeshita taps out like a bitch. Jericho picks up the win in DDT. Takeshita's home promotion. You gotta love it. I think you can tell by my voice. This match was good. A lot of the other stuff that I just talked about was weird uh i i I, not, I don't hate it uh it was it's funny um it is what it is kind of a thing with me but uh this like a serious re- good wrestling match will beat a weird for the sake of weird wrestling match in my eyes any time we also had the main event chris brooks versus yoki Eno. uh i don't know much about ddt but i do know these guys are modern staples of ddt and apparently best friends that had the same goal of winning the KOD Openweight title, uh, more or less the world championship in DDT. A uh, good match. I do think at this match this match hit me where I think a lot of AEW fans would really enjoy watching DDT. Uh, Yoki uh, Yuno got the victory. And uh, just like uh, S- Saki Akira, uh, the lady who retired in the six-man tag earlier in the show, uh, I didn't have to know much about this guy to know that this was a big deal. DDT does a good job presenting things as big deals and letting people know based on the perception, presentation, and spectacle of these victories and of these moments what we should care about. So I will say... As much as it seems like I may be making fun of DDT with the uh, ridiculous match types in the one match, they did a good job of doing things and making things feel like a big deal across the whole show. Much more than I think AEW does and much more than I think a lot of promotions do. So before you give this promotion all the shit, you got to give them a little bit of praise because they do make things feel like a big deal for their fans. And this show was like a five and a half, six hour show. And they had their crowd in a big arena in Japan entertained for the whole damn thing. They had them entertained through the comedy matches. They had them crying whenever people were retiring. They had them on the edge of their feet when their guy won the the KOD championship match for the first time. Um, So... You can't really say DDT is a bad wrestling promotion. Or you could if you wanted to, but I would defend them. Uh, I I bet I would defend them. I would defend them for the people that hated them just as much as I would complain about them to the people that liked them. I don't know. I'm kind of still on the fence with this promotion. uh, As I'm speaking to you, I'm realizing it. Hopefully, maybe this encourages you to watch something on maybe YouTube for DDT and let me know what you think on X. X going to give it to you. Fly high. I'm out.